G'day! After I made my initial video about Bob's Fury, I was encouraged by some people on YouTube, such as Jim Leonard, to make some improvements to it, because they thought it would be possible to get it working on older machines, such as an IBM XT. I've been taking a look at doing this, and I thought I'd like to give you a little bit of an update on how things are going. So first, uh, what I did was I tried to improve the game logic as much as I could, and I made a lot of progress with that. But I could only really get it working on, say, something like a 7 MHz Turbo XT. Uh, what I'm looking at today is improving the graphics library so I can get it working on a uh, base IBM with a CGA card and 4.77 MHz. Let's take a look at what I've done so far. Here it is running on 86 box configured as an XT. It is playable but struggles in terms of game speed. Profiling indicated that the graph library is consuming much of the CPU time. I had read about the Borland graph library being fairly slow in the past, so it didn't really come as a surprise. I'm using four different modes with the Borland graphics library. VGA, CGA, Visa, and EGA, with VGA and CGA being the simpler of the four to write my own library for. So that's where I've started my coding effort. Coding for VGA in mode 13 hex is relatively straightforward, as the memory is arranged as a linear buffer of 64,000 bytes, with each byte representing a pixel. With a bit of simple math, it's easy to draw to the screen. I don't really have the need for something more advanced, such as mode X, as all I'm doing is throwing bitmaps around. Anything likely to have a VGA card will work well enough. I was able to fairly quickly make relatively efficient code for this graphics mode with the use of the 8086 string instructions and fairly basic optimizations. I'm sure you could make something faster, but I've hit the point of diminishing returns. We'll see later that there is a significant improvement over the Borland library. CGA on the other hand is quite a bit more tricky to code for. Each byte contains 4 pixels, so bit masking is needed in some circumstances. Computing the memory address is complicated by CGA memory being divided into two banks of memory, one for even and odd rows. It's not the most complicated to code for, that prize belongs to EGA, but it's not straightforward either. Just drawing a pixel is a complicated task. Fortunately, we can use some bit operations to speed up the math for calculating the memory offset. After that, we need to prepare the pixel mask and data for writing to the screen. They need to be shifted into position so the correct pixel is drawn to. Once the pixel mask and data are ready, we can load the relevant byte from screen memory, apply the mask, add new pixel data, and write the new data back to the screen. Drawing one pixel at a time would be slow, for bitmap graphics in general, it's much better to draw blocks of pixels at a time. Obviously, drawing a block of image data isn't as easy as it was for VGA. Much like drawing a single pixel, we may have to start the image data partway through a byte, requiring image data for each row to be shifted. The start and end bytes will also have data that will need to be preserved. This is obviously time consuming. There is also a need to deal with bank switching, as only half of the rows will be drawn in each bank. My first attempt at writing a blit routine was quite long and complex. The first and last byte of each row are where masking is required to keep pixels that shouldn't be affected. However, every byte from the image buffer needs to be shifted to put it on the correct pixels. I managed to squeeze this in fairly well using registers for the most part. In the process, I had used less memory per image than the Borland library and achieved a faster result, but I wasn't satisfied with the small speed increase, as this won't make my game much more playable on 8088 hardware. In coding, you can sometimes trade space for speed and vice versa. It turns out that this is one of those occasions. One part that held back the first blit routine was having to shift the entire image buffer to draw its pixels at the correct location, so it makes a lot of sense to store some pre-shifted copies of the image to save time when drawing. 
The downside is the much larger memory footprint per image, but I think it's worth it for the performance increase we'll see in the results. The code for each row becomes much simpler. The first and last bytes still need some masking to preserve pixels that are not being drawn, but any byte in the middle can simply be copied without any extra processing. This finally got the results I desired in terms of speed, although it did cost a significant amount of memory. It increases the memory footprint of the game's graphics from about 7.5k using the Borland library to about 27k for this new library. For most DOS machines this won't be an issue, as many have the full 640k conventional RAM. I'm hoping to get this running on an XT, so limited memory might be a problem. But in general it's easier to add memory to these machines than it is to speed them up. So I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. High performance isn't the only advantage to building your own library. I'm building a new feature into my libraries, the ability to draw into an off-screen memory buffer. It doesn't sound like much, but it should allow me to reduce some flicker and perhaps a few other things I'm considering improving. Speaking of performance, I did some performance testing comparing the BGI and my new code. I've tested it on two different configurations. The first is my microbyte machine, which has a 386SX running at 20MHz. I don't have any old 8088 hardware, so for my second configuration I'm using 86 box set up with an 8088 CPU running at 4.77MHz. The first test on the 386SX with the VGA library shows promising results. The test that affects performance for Bob's Fury the most is copying sprites with the XOR operation, which is somewhere near three times faster than the Borland library. Something else to note is that drawing to a buffer in memory is faster again. This is because main memory is faster than video memory on most machines. The CGA code fares well on the 386SX machine as well, showing significant speed gains doing XOR image copying. Drawing to a memory buffer instead of video memory has a much smaller speed advantage. My theory is there is less data going to video memory, resulting in a smaller change. XT class machines with an 8088 is really the meat of why I'm writing the new graphics library, so performance here matters more. Most machines of this vintage wouldn't have a VGA card, but it is nice to see that the VGA library works significantly faster, especially the XOR image copy, which is more than four times faster. The more likely configuration for an 8088 machine is of course a CGA card and display. 86 box was set to emulate an original CGA with snow. My CGA library is roughly two thirds faster for the two blitting operations, which I think is a pretty good speed increase. This will hopefully be enough to get Bob's Fury to run at full speed. I'm hopeful that the performance increases I've managed to get will make Bob's Fury playable on XT hardware, not just the Turbo XTs. I'm yet to get to the point where it's playable yet though because I've got a lot of development work between the initial libraries and actually getting it working in the game. I'm no expert, there may be more optimizations to make as well, so maybe I can get it to go a little bit faster with a little bit of time and patience. The Borland graphics interface, or the Borland graphics library in general, have proven to be a little bit slow. I think that this is sort of to be expected given what it's really made for. It was more made for presentation graphics uh, for general applications that were expected to be developed with Borland Pascal or Borland C++ and it's not really meant to do something that requires high performance. The Borland graphics library therefore has a lot of features in it that you don't really need in something like a game that I'm making. Um, things like polyfills with patterns and stuff like that that's sort of a bit superfluous. This takes up a lot of extra space in the executable, so it might be worth getting rid of it just to save space and memory um, in that regard. 
Anyhow, I'm actually looking forward to doing some playtesting on my game, so I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching, and see you then.